everybody. Welcome to WD Carousel of Podcast. My name's Crystal. And I'm Ian. And today we are going to do a, um, I was going to say an animator spotlight, but there are two of them that we will be discussing. Yes, absolutely. But first, we need to talk to you briefly about Patreon. Uh, we have launched a Patreon a little bit ago, and we are putting a lot of new content there. We're trying to ramp things up to it. You can get access to episodes earlier. Uh, you can get one-on-one -on -one access to us and have you know one-on-one -on -one conversations, even like a monthly uh, meetup, a, a, a video meetup. So uh, yeah, with yeah, COVID, we're not, we're not going to cool. do face-to-face. -face, no, face-to-face -face stuff, but um, yes. Also we, opens up to a wider audience and everything, but I yeah. uh, can support us with... Any support that you guys Patreon. are willing to donate. We have three different tiers right now, and it all goes to helping us create the show and provide you with the content that you look for every week. So yeah. anything that you want to donate is greatly appreciated. Check us out right. at... Um, is it patreon.com slash WD, WD Carousel podcast. podcast or it's available in the description text of your episode you're listening to right now. Um, and I think you can get, I might, I have to double check this, but I think you can get um, access, early access to episodes um, if nice. you are as um, paying as little as like a dollar, like you can get as long as you're a paying a month. That's not yeah, bad. yeah, yeah. And but you don't get any of the other stuff. But I think you can still get early access. I have to double check yeah. <laughs> all that. But yes. So check us out there, yeah. and we appreciate all your help. So yeah. on to the show. We yes, will quite. be discussing two animators. Now, Crystal, why are you talking about an animator spotlight, but you are doing two? Well, yeah. because they are basically two sides of the same coin. They are the same unit that has been existing for the majority of their yes. life. Yes. Um, now, I do, I do want to say that trying to do research into Ollie Johnston and Frank Thomas, who are the um, animators we will be discussing today. Yeah, yeah was actually really difficult and hmm. this is our first real like toe dip into the nine old men which True. you've probably heard us throw around that phrase or if you are in the disney fandom you know that walt's nine old men were the huge influential creators that cr helped him create the empire of disney animation as we know it right 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 but trying to get information on them is nigh on impossible yeah like i think i was looking at ollie's wikipedia page and mm -hmm. there was a paragraph for his career Ugh. and then just a list of movies that he, he animated on. on oh man but not what he's done he's how done. he contributed sure. anything about his life i mean there's so many different things that these are amazing innovators. It was it was difficult finding this information. So yeah. as we get further and further into the this kind of discovery of the nine old men, um, and an introduction to the you know creations that mm -hmm. they made, um, yeah. realize that this is. I'm, I'm I'm glad we're doing this so that we, at least they're out there someplace. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. More than just a name. Yeah, we'll have to tag it up. So if you want to spread it around, we can be a at least your first stop to try to get some information and then go from there. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Um, jumping into it. Yes. It wasn't. Uh, they first met in 1931 at Stanford University for the arts department. They had both been attending. Um. And backing up a little bit further than that, though, it took them a few decades after they had initially met to find out that their mothers were born in the same small town in Illinois. That's so weird. <laughs> and they didn't know each other. Um, oh also, God. their their fathers are both educators. And like yeah. these similarities <laughs> are going to keep popping up throughout this whole like explanation of the two, which is yeah. why everybody, even Walt, would talk about them as Frank and Ollie, Frank and Ollie, Frank and Ollie. It was almost as if it was one person that they were talking <laughs> about because they rolled the names together so often right. on so many right. different projects. Right. That's hilarious. And 
then in um, 1931, when they were studying art at Stanford, one of the uh, instructors there got, found out that there was um, some live live models for for, oh. for drawings, and yeah. threw a hissy fit, and said that they will never have live models of various levels of undress in okay. the art department again. And so oh. the guys actually decided that they were going to go to this other like little community college for a place to study live portraiture and live painting. Yeah. And oh, funny. Yeah. Um, and that's where they really connected and started their decades long friendship. They would um, talk about, they'd be driving back to their little apartment and stop at this one bar where Frank would play the piano and they always had to trade like one of their paintings that they did during class or something for dinner. <laughs> <laughs> like the business wanted that instead of money, which was right, fine for right. poor college kids. But <laughs> Right, no, absolutely. I wish I could do something like that now. I know. Um, just imagine having an art piece of Frank or Ollie's or you know hanging up in your house just you know that cost me a burger right right i think i just had to give them a burger and they gave me this original artwork yeah um that's crazy and then after school they decided to move into a boarding house in la together which kind of um they, they never lived apart really ever again so it started a boarding house in la and then they got an apartment yeah. together and then they got and uh, when um ollie married marie they got two separate apartments one across the hall from each other then they moved into a house um with the boys and marie and then a duplex for both of the couples oh my god once frank married jeanette and then finally they built houses next to each other sharing <laughs> um property with a yeah. huge railroad and just all this other it's it they never lived alone like That's they were so crazy peanut butter and jelly they were like wow best friends stuck together yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> they even uh -huh. both both started with the Disney company in 1934. Yeah, and they both left in 78. <laughs> yes. Same time. They just retired at the same time. Oh my god. Um uh, through, yeah. through, through some interviews. Yeah. Um you can or I found out that Ollie started as an in-betweener and okay. Frank actually started out as an animator i think it was frank first that had gotten the job at disney and then told ollie that he should okay. apply and sure, then sure ollie got in and they've been together with the company ever since but wow. i was shocked to see that ollie started at a, a little bit lower level right right he, st he started did. not doing an animator that's crazy mm -hmm. um yeah and so they they had <laughs> In talking, talking to Frank and Ollie, uh, Frank says he uh, had his best ideas while shaving due to the electrical current so close to his brain, which is really funny. <laughs> My grandpa used to use an electric clever. shaver like that. Yeah, I mine did too. Yeah, I used the one that the round, like the Phillips Norelco mm -hmm. ones. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. That's really funny. Um, and Ollie was a walker. He would he would always walk around and 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 get his get his creative juices moving. Yeah, which is which which I which I I could totally see that. Yeah, he's basically um, at his house. He's worn a path into his front yard because he takes <laughs> wow. the same path every day, and right, it's not even right. a straight path. It's like this like yeah, looping hook that yeah you know you you have a driveway you have sidewalk you have road but oh no you're gonna walk on the grass in that right. same path so often you wear it away <laughs> oh whatever. man whatever <laughs> uh the first disney short that both of these gentlemen worked on together was the 1963 short more kittens which i'm not familiar uh, with 63 or 36 36 excuse me 36. thank you there you go thank you for the correction sorry okay. um but the big one that you know everybody should know about is they a both little, started little, <laughs> they both worked on a snow little white. film called snow white you ever heard of it <laughs> yeah maybe maybe just a little bit yeah um and of course they were just starting out with the disney company disney was just starting out with theatrical animation so all of this was completely brand new to everybody on the team but they got to be part of it from near on the beginning um and they came in and they said they're only of the nine old men 
that Disney talks about. There were only four that were already existing prior to them. And okay. I think Frank said that his employment number was 224. Oh, wow. That's so crazy. thinking of all of the different levels of animation that we have discussed in prior episodes, for him yeah. to be employee number 224 is a very low number. That's a very yeah. low number. Mm-hmm. Um, in 1941, Walt was sent to South America for a sort of ambassador trip in World War II by uh, Roosevelt. Um, and he and oh, and the strike. How did I can't remember how yeah, that this timed was also out. We, during the time that the strike was going yeah. on. So if you listen yeah. to our Disney strike video, we talked about how Roosevelt, the President Roosevelt, actually kind of interceded yes. in the strike that happened. And this was the yes. way that he did. He told Walt that he needed Walt to be an ambassador during World War II to the South American countries. He said the ABC countries. So I think, uh, what's A? Argentina, Tina. Brazil, and Chile. And... Yep. Um, then he would take care of the labor teams while Walt was gone doing this. And Walt okay. said, okay, just as long as you can make some movies off of the content that he found down there. Cause he didn't want to just go right. down and shake hands. And right, so right. they're like, okay, yeah, whatever. And he brought 18 animators with him and he only brought Frank. He did not bring okay. Ollie at this time. Interesting. But from that trip, they created the uh, Saludos Amigos and the Three Caballeros. So Got if it. you are familiar with the disney catalog and you see the two south american influenced movies that's where that came from huh it, make, it makes sense that they kind of got inspired by going somewhere i didn't really yeah. think about that though huh mm -hmm. um, um yeah go for it <laughs> i was just gonna say uh frank and ollie are most well known out of the nine old men um for their personality animation they really were the pioneers of it even beyond walt what walt imagined and um walt has been quoted to say because they are some of the best screen actors ever so a lot of the interviews that i was watching you would see frank and or ollie acting out the character that they oh, were sure. in charge of animating and mm -hmm. it's almost spot on exactly what they ended up animating so okay. taking it beyond just that little mirror that we've sometimes seen next to an animator's desk where they look right, at it just to right. get the right facial structure yeah. but to actually see like hand gestures and body movement and all of this but they did yeah. have their differences yeah, so Ollie was very much the intuitive animator. The <laughs> I was thinking about like Myers Briggs. Sorry, <laughs> um, what you know? What is the character thinking? Why why do they feel that way? What is the what right? What what's your motivation? Kind of vibe. <laughs> Yeah. Um, when he would draw, it was very light, light drawings. They said like kissing the paper with his pencil. Yeah. Soft yeah. lines, simple, crisp forms to make a statement. Um, yeah. Ollie kind of had it in his gut the way that the scene was going to be and knew what reactions they were trying to get out of the characters yeah. as well as the audience. So he worked very intuitively. Versus, you know, Frank, who was right. more analytical. Um, the note taker. Yeah. <laughs> he wanted to figure everything out. Um, so yeah. Sometimes it's like yeah. even like a thousand lines for oh, one sketch. No. Just trying to make sure that he got everything perfect. <laughs> um, it's almost been quoted to say that he would keep drawing almost like a sculptor tearing away at clay until he finds the expression that he needed. But he kept drawing okay. and searching with his pencil to find the expression. Until he could find what he wanted to see. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, is that a, is this a Walt quote? No, that's a Frank quote. That's a Frank quote. Mm -hmm. uh, he said that? Yeah. About Frank said, um, that he, he had contact with the magic behind the drawing and not the drawing itself. Drawing itself. Okay. So, so it's like looking, he could, looking at it, he could see behind mm -hmm. just the, the image and yeah. look at what it, what was drawing the image to what you were seeing yeah he talked about it like he was almost inside um, working in three dimensions within the scene 
the paintings and stuff right. and right. so he had that idea of being self in there and he talked about like if the phone would ring and it would pull him out of it he was lost for a bit because he had been so engrossed in within the scene sure like he was actually there um that he had a hard time coming out of it to be able to sure talk to whoever huh. was calling on the phone huh but they both leaned on each other a lot, um, helping edit, correct, um, remember ideas. They drove to work back and forth, carpooled every single day. So work didn't stop when they punched out for the day. A lot of the times sure. they would still be discussing whatever scene they were working on, coming up with ideas back and forth. Yeah. And then would sketch it out. And then, you know, Ollie would go up to Frank and be like, okay, so here's what I thought. And Frank would be like, well, I thought you said that you had mentioned something about him, his arm doing this and, right. or having this gesture. And Ollie would be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I remember that. Now let me, let me correct that. Or Frank would come to right. Ollie and be like, well, here's, here's what I have. And Ollie would be like, well, you don't necessarily need to have that little area there. I might edit sure. this here. Or, you know, one was very fluid one was very detail focused and they really worked off of each other they say in the best way possible that they would not have been able to come up with the quality of work that they did without having each other having each other that's pretty mm -hmm. amazing um they had so they've, they've worked on quite a few famous scenes from very classic films um pinocchio i've only seen pinocchio once and it was a while ago so some of this stuff i don't remember um, Pinocchio lying in the cage, and they had to like compare the nose sizes. How does yeah, that? Yeah, because they were they were both working on the lie oh, scene, yeah. where Pinocchio was talking to the blue fairy, and yeah. so it's like I can't remember who was doing what, but to know what point the nose was at before the other one got to it, and thickness and little oh my God. like wooden nose additions yeah. because at the end yeah. there's like buds and flowers and yeah. like a whole bird's oh, nest man. on there so being able to compare nose sizes um and these are just a few of the famous scenes that they've worked on like in bambi um ollie did the thumper eating the greens is a special treat scene so yeah. the part where thumper is being chastised for telling bambi to eat only clover and gotcha. he mom's like what does what did your father tell you and eating greens is a special treat and and goes through the whole thing and that was ollie and okay. then frank in bambi he did the part where bambi and thumper are you know playing around on the ice and Walt right. almost cut that. And so he had three days to convince him to keep it. So he basically had to sketch out the whole scene oh, man. and convince Walt to keep it um, <laughs> in just three days or else that part was going to be anyway. um, wow. chopped. Wow. Mm -hmm. um, and they uh, also did the Lady in the Tramp spaghetti scene. The classic, classic scene that everyone knows it's like it's just become ubiquitous <laughs> yes it's almost like Beyond traditional disney thing. romantic scene in animation literally. literally um they did robin hood and oh, yeah. so these these scenes that i pulled from here they were talking in the interview about their children and that's where they got the inspiration from so ollie okay. worked on the scene where prince john was sucking his thumb while pulling his ear <laughs> and frank worked on the part where prince john was sleeping and robin and everybody was stealing gold from around his bed and sure. prince john's he talks about prince john's feet like curling up and like kicking the sheets a little bit and he's like my son used to do that a lot too and that's where i got the oh, inspiration for funny. it that's funny uh yeah and then um so I'm trying to think doorknob i'm trying to think of the so alice in wonderland alice in wonderland frank did the doorknob so this is where alice just fell down the rabbit hole and is trying to get into wonderland and right. the okay. conversation that they have because ollie did alice um Ollie wanted Alice to be more quiet and demure. And Frank was like, no, we got to give what, what are we going to have the doorknob talk about? I need to have him actually have some lines here. I need to have some sort of right, action right. because me just drawing a doorknob is going to be really boring. So boring. Yeah. <laughs> if you look at the scene, you're going to find that Alice is very short on her, on, on her words in her scripting. She has like 
two two words three word sentences and then right. it's like the doorknob is just going off all over because <laughs> frank wanted to be able to animate something and he just oh kind of took it and ran with it that's funny uh, and peter pan um ollie worked on smee and uh frank worked on hook um and that scene at the oh yeah that's in the piano yeah is that where hook, hook was playing yeah. yeah 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 um in interview he talked about how he was trying to figure out because frank was a pianist um oh. and he wanted to include that and he's like how can i get someone with a hook to play the piano because it's not like he can do bring because right. he doesn't have the full scale but that's where he talked about because the hook can do that um so it's just taking a lot of personal inspiration from yeah you know their life yeah um yeah. but i mean we can keep going over these over yeah, and over so again the other big one that i'm going to bring up though is the jungle book so this is the movie that we know that walt died while it was still in production for right and we've talked about this as well that if this movie did not succeed the walt disney studios you know, Would the whole animation survived. studios might not have survived. Right. And I found out through all the interviews that I was watching that Frank and Ollie were pivotal to this. Like they went over and they they animated over half of the scenes. They were in charge Jeez. of Blue and Mowgli. And without their contributions to making sure that this movie was a success, the Walt Disney Animation Studios might not still be around but in That's total, crazy. they had worked on 23 features together and um, four books together, um, one of which that I actually have here, which is The Illusions of Life Disney Animation. Unfortunately, I forgot that I had this book while I was going <laughs> over the animation process a couple episodes back. But yeah. they said that when they were writing these books... Um, they just were talking about what they did regularly, not realizing that this was, you know, groundbreaking techniques and, right. um, being able to, you know, take advantage of them of the nine old men, Frank and Ollie specialized in the most sincere emotions for the animation, um, able to suspend disbelief movie after movie. Um, a lot of things like sorrow and yeah. heartache, um, the subtleness of the romance scene between Lady and Tramp, where Lady is all demure and you can see the moment Tramp falls in love with her. You know, those right. are the things that they really specialized in. Nice. Absolutely. So uh, Frank met his wife, um, Jeanette, mm -hmm. in, and, and they married, married in 1946. Yep. Um, and and then, Ollie yeah. met his wife, Marie, who was actually an ink and paint girl. <laughs> oh, got it. Of course. In 1943. Classic. Got it. But... Yeah, and then they. I, I, oh my god! I couldn't find out where Jeanette, where Jeanette worked because it was worked. never brought okay. up. I was, okay. I was wondering if you, if if she was a Disney girl as well, but worked I could not HR find it anywhere. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, both both of their wives had their first babies within a week of each other, which is Six so days. flipping flipping weird. <laughs> Again, these guys are just they're they're duplicates in everything. Yeah. yeah. Um, when Walt would talk about the nine old men, he'd use one key phrase for each one, and so like for Ollie, it was like Ollie, the train guy, and train it's guy. because yeah. Ollie's passion for trains actually got Walt re-excited for them and renewed his love in them. Um, nice. And so it's kind of it's kind of Ollie's fault that Walt got back into trains and then so is that, is that subsequently why we've got, the parks uh, and subsequently yeah. everything else. I'm, I'm so not going so to complain about transit. it. Yeah, no, yep, I'm, and, I'm, I'm all about it. In one of the Disneyland specials uh, that Walt filmed, he mentions trains and Ollie's connection to them. And he said it took ollie um over four thousand hours to build his own modern model oh steam God. engine and he has a full-size real one that was on his property oh my god That's <laughs> that he would drive around wow mm -hmm. and then All the right. the nickname that walt used for frank was uh frank the piano guy frank the piano guy Mm -hmm. <laughs> and because he oh yeah because he played in a jazz band which uh was called firehouse five five plus two <laughs> mm -hmm. 
uh, and they did Dixieland Jazz. Um, they had 13 LPs made. Wow. Mm-hmm. And uh, they actually made a number of television appearances. And most um, of the uh, Firehouse 5 Plus 2 were almost all in the Disney company. Company. That's so crazy. Including some of um, the other nine old men. Nine old men. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Lord Kimball, Harper Goff. I mean. That's, yeah. Yeah. That is hilarious. Mm-hmm. And just, yeah, people who are. Yeah. That's crazy. Yep. Um, and then we're just going to wrap up this episode with if you have any more interest in these guys, they're so sweet. Um, yeah. They actually do have a documentary uh, that's about an hour and a half long available on Disney Plus. It's called Frank and Ollie. Um, I highly recommend watching it. It's from 1995. And it's just they're so sweet. They're such old sweet guys. Yeah. Just want to hug them. Unfortunately, they've all yeah. passed away. Yeah. Um, but time does that. But their contributions to the Walt Disney Animation Studio and just animation in general um, need to be spoken of more because yeah, they're revolutionary. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Made a, it seems like they made a lot of the the heart and soul of the characters you really like in the in the in the disney movies and Mm -hmm. it's it's cool to see that they've had such a big part of that i mean 23 of the regular movies you know the disney features that we are familiar Mm -hmm. with i mean i could keep going um in sword in the stone there was they were part of the squirrel scene they did archimedes um they did mad madam mim we're talking about i know they were in cinderella i know that they i mean like they've touched everything (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah they absolutely. even talked about like the rescuers and it, it just I, yeah. i'm trying not to just list off <laughs> different scenes that they've done but yeah. everybody whether you know it or not has seen their animation because yeah. they're so inter you know integral yeah. integral 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 well yeah whatever I i'm questioning myself you now yeah it's um, okay. to the movies that we grew up with and know and love um yeah. they i think somebody said that you know at least half of the world knows what they've created yeah. even if they don't uh, know who they are they, they know they what are. they've created and wow. i think that is amazing it's it's kind of sad but amazing yeah but definitely definitely an interesting way to have your legacy set is to just like your work lives on eternally basically even though you're not necessarily well known yeah yeah so this has been our first round of the nine old men we are going to continue with this series occasionally bringing up another one here so we have seven more to go (laughs) because ub was technically not a nine old man 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 i don't know i think he got out too he got out early and then came back but yeah, so this has been WD Carousel of Podcast. My name's Crystal. And I'm Ian. And we hope you have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. Bye, everybody. Bye.